podcast number 16 with the one and only Hillary Allen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so excited. Let's do this. Hillary Allen, thank you very oh. much for being in the show. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks uh, for having me. Oh, my God. Uh, I've been wanting to have you on the show for a while because I was telling you about what the premise of the Dig Deep podcast is, and it's just having people that, and I'm being selfish here, I personally find super inspiring <laughs> that I think dig deep, not only physically, but mentally, to be the best they can be. And um, I've always thought about, you know, I've, I've th thought about yourself, so about you. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. I'm very flattered. <laughs> oh, my God. So, okay. So we're going to talk a about a lot of things, running and a uh, crazy accident that happened to you almost yeah. a year ago. <laughs> um, is it too tacky to say the comeback? But it's okay. <laughs> I'm I'm getting comfortable with that <laughs> word. Yes, kicking ass, my <laughs> God! Just you just won uh, a big race, and is the Cortina uh, 48k? Is that I Italy? Yes, yeah, so it's okay. in it's in um, Cortina, okay, Ampezzo in uh, the Dolomites in Italy. I've never been to that part oh, of the world. So beautiful. So you see, my wife and I, we we have this plan where we want to do a trip where we're gonna run or bike she's more of a cyclist so mm -hmm. but the plan is to go somewhere in the alps and let's say we go for a ride we, we'll ride a lot and we'll mm -hmm. eat a lot of course <laughs> it is a good place for that <laughs> exactly and then we'll go to belgium and drink beer oh that's perfect <laughs> <laughs> ride your bike a far <laughs> ways oh <laughs> uh, i just wish big fans of of all things belgian beers and craft beer so yes okay so again we're going to talk a lot of about a lot of things but wanted to kick off this one um so I and I was saying this a, a minute ago. Oh, but by the way, okay, for our listeners and viewers, if you hear, you know, a little extra noises and voices and a little background noise, is because we're doing a little experiment here. We so I usually do this interviews at the Bully Running Company usually uh, before business hours or after business hours. So decided to try something new, do it during business hours. So we might have uh, uh, interesting looks from people asking what's going on <laughs> but it is one o'clock one ten on a thursday afternoon so um <laughs> we'll see how it goes but killer yeah yeah <laughs> it's gonna be awesome might be uh, people stretching in the background <laughs> who knows we're by the recovery and it'll be, you know the best part would be somebody comes to us and asks us hey i need a i need to be fitted for a shoe or something like that but we could both <laughs> do it i used to work here part-time and i work here part-time so, so there you go. There we you can. go. All right. We don't carry the North Face. Well, shoes. But I know. Apparel. Apparel. Not apparel. Yeah, you will come uh, spring 19. Oh, <laughs> I like that. I like that. Um. Okay. So I was telling you this before we started the conversation. I, I'm on Instagram and I'm, I follow uh, a friend who apparently is a mutual friend, maybe <laughs> Conrad. Anyway, he, um, he's a big triathlete. He trains a lot. And mm -hmm. so he did this big ride, which is... Um, a ride on on this place called Trail Ridge Road, mm -hmm. um, so it's a beautiful, crazy climb on Rocky Mountain National Park, mm -hmm. and it goes up to twelve thousand feet. Anyway, mm -hmm. I see him posted a photo of himself with a bunch of other people, and I'm like, triathlete, triathlete. Okay, I know this guy, and then I see Hillary's face, and I'm like, <laughs> what? I I I just didn't know that um, you like to ride because <laughs> doing that kind of ride, you're not you're a cyclist, so. I'm just curious about you you cycling. Uh, yeah. Mm, how long have you been doing that? I assume you do that maybe kind of like cross training with running. Tell mm -hmm. me more about that. So definitely cross training with running. I had no idea what I was getting myself <laughs> into. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I definitely picked up cycling um, when d just during this injury. And I really actually oh. love to cycle um, for like I, w I started cycling before I started running, actually. OK. Um, but never very long or for very a long period of time. I just enjoyed it as far as like getting into endurance sports. Yeah. Um, this particular ride up Trail Ridge Road, it's a doozy. And uh, so I've never done it. Can you tell? our listeners um yeah. to talk more about it so it's about um, maybe 46 miles something like this uh, 47 miles you start like on the outskirts of rocky mountain national park yep. so you're starting high yeah um so like an estes park which i'm not sure the elevation of estes but it's probably eight thousand eight thousand yeah. feet and you ride it's just basically a continual climb all the way up um trail ridge road yeah. which we did it where um the ba basically the top half of it uh wasn't open to cars yet because they had just yes. plowed it so it was yeah. really cool you get to ride by snowfields yeah. 
that looks beautiful. Yeah, and then you ride up to the top, which is above 12,000 feet, and then you actually descend a little bit onto the backside where there's yeah. this visitor center parking. Yeah. It's on like the west side of the of Rocky Mountain National Park. It's incredibly beautiful, incredibly scenic. Um, and you go up to 12,000 feet. And you stay up there for a <laughs> while, yeah. Um, and then it's basically an outback back and you come back. Um, so wait, are you saying that's 20 plus miles each way? Yeah, so 20 plus miles of climbing. Of climb. And then you come back And it's down. not... I mean, it's a steady climb. I, I, it's funny because I, I always, you know, been there, th- you know, driving. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's beautiful, but it's it's pretty hard. It um, is, and I was like, I didn't know. I mean, I was like in my running, like literally, I have like one cycling like so how, bib and shorts. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you like? Uh, I'm we, just curious. How did you join? I mean, how did you decide to join that ride? So I met Conrad that day, that morning. <laughs> okay. Um, I believe. Yeah. Um, and yeah, because they're part of the Castelli Triathlon exactly, team with yes. uh, what's uh, another uh, Instagram friend? Uh, what's her name? Brianna. Brianna. Right. I yeah, met. Of so I was. This was the first time I was meeting all these people, and they're so great. So I knew yeah. a mutual friend, Ben. Fen- Fenton. Okay. Um, and I had like gone on like a little, a couple rides with him, but yeah. literally I had just, I've just gotten into cycling, um, f- during my recovery period. So yeah. the last, not even six months. Um, so I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> and like, of course, like they're on their tri bikes and they're just like going for it. And I'm like, you know, kind of off the back, like thinking yeah. like, Oh gosh, like I'm just going to do my thing. Like, I guess I wasn't that far back, but Conrad yeah. kept on saying, he's just like, how are you so fast on that bike? And I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm the last person. Like, what are you talking about? But then I realized, you know, there's like a, like a couple pro triathletes there and like yeah like well <laughs> but then you know you're freaking strong so <laughs> that was but it's really fun it's actually a really cool way to move and cover a longer like distance um i liked that ride a lot because there weren't cars so i didn't have to worry about that yeah that and made it special i guess yeah. yeah and then also i got into i have a gravel bike actually so i've had this road bike that i use for a yeah. few years now but um i got a new gravel bike and that's Ooh. been really cool to Sweet. explore all the yeah. like, the climbs and yeah of course i like my nickname's hilly goat so i love anything climbing so <laughs> okay so um <laughs> I need to know um, how did um, <laughs> who gave you that nickname? Oh gosh, <laughs> is that like a question that everybody asks? No, it's just a funny <laughs> answer, okay, okay, and okay. it's the truth. You can't make it up. So um, the the last boyfriend I had, which okay. was like four years ago, okay, <laughs> was when I first started getting into running, okay, um, and racing. Okay. And I think it was him or his friend that gave me the nickname Hilly Goat. Okay, his 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 good friend started calling me that, like, what the heck, Hilly Goat? Like, what are you doing? And then it just kind of stuck. So he kept on calling me that and then we broke up and i just kept the nickname oh that's awesome <laughs> well that totally makes sense because you just uh we're gonna talk about uh how you got into not only trail running but sky racing mm. um but we'll talk about that in a minute um <laughs> all right let's talk about uh growing up in fort collins yeah. which is uh just down the road I don't know if I told you, but I just moved there two months ago. Yeah, and no, you didn't. Uh, you said yeah. you lived there. But so uh, two months ago, and it's awesome. Where we in Fort Collins do you live? So, okay, um, I'm never good at knowing where I am, <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure I live by the Budweiser plant. Well, oh, okay. not next to it, but... <laughs> <laughs> that could be convenient, you know, uh, post-run recovery. Oh, knows? for real. <laughs> um, but it's in this uh, place called Adriel Hills. Okay. which I'm pretty sure is our retirement community. It's <laughs> hilarious because there's, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. There's always all kinds of golf carts and um, older people playing like golf. And <laughs> you see the ladies going to the pool and do aqua. aqua hey, wood. don't joke about well, that. <laughs> I was in like really good aqua jogging. Like, uh, that was like what motivated me hard. to get out of bed in the morning. Like that was my only form of movement for yeah. a while. I'm just kidding. But no. yeah, I had the like little like thing around my waist and I would just go and go back and forth yeah. in uh, one lane for like an hour and that's all I could an take hour. mentally. <laughs> oh my god. Um, um I wouldn't use the weights though. I didn't yeah. get into that, but and um <laughs> we moved there and it's great. I love everything. The only thing that sucks especially where I live is the internet, but I think it's the <laughs> area where we live, so yeah. every time I need to upload one of these videos or or do some serious file upload, I go downtown and yeah. um but well, it's it's great. I have not actually been running a lot because, actually, until recently, I didn't really have any goal for like, w- what should I do for the rest of the year? So you're gonna be happy to tell you that I'm okay. 50k in Heck September, yeah. um, the bear chase. I've oh done yeah. it before, but um, this it's time a good one. this time I'm training. There we go. Um, I yeah, I just bought this online plan. Um, so Very I'm really nice. excited because it this plan combines not only 
running but also strength training which i haven't done mm -hmm. like ever and i will tell you strength training is where it's at yeah like i had a huge amount of that and during my recovery and i'd love to incorporate it in the off season and cycling is a big way for strength training yes. for running too it's different muscle groups yeah you know that um I've only run a 50 mile, which was a silver rush, um, That's 50 a hard one. in 2012. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't run much, but I biked a lot. Like I would go up, um, left hand Canyon road, mm -hmm. all those kinds of route r uh, runs. And, um, I think my longest run in preparation for that 50 miler was 15 miles. So it was yeah. not a lot. It was just a lot of cycling. And, and I think cycling as far as like for converting to trail running if yeah. you go uphill cycling it converts super well yeah. i think maybe flat cycling not so much but yeah yeah so if conrad's gonna be listening to this he needs <laughs> to take me out on more hard conrad. rides oh i like that <laughs> conrad can i tag along <laughs> conrad is actually um my model in my on my website dig deep oh well, there he's, we go he's like yeah <laughs> and he just recently like overcame an injury too so yeah 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 um so fort collins Anyways, back to fort collins <laughs> um growing up in fort collins do you have any favorite memories of uh the area or things you, you, you like to do. Um, yeah. I know that you've always been curious about all things science. Mm -hmm. So we'd like to learn more about that. Yeah. Course. So Fort Collins, it has a special place in my heart. I love, I mean, the trail system out there is incredible. I actually I was not, okay. it is. So, okay. you, and, and there's such a good trail running community out there too. Cool. Um, and, but so like, you know, the Cameron pass and like the never summer hundred K out there is yeah. amazing. Nick Clark. Um, so, but Fort Collins is, I think it's underrated as far as like trail running goes. Um, but we'll oh, get back to that later because yeah. I wasn't always a trail runner. Yeah. So I can explore that now that I do that there. Yeah. But as far as a community, it's just, it's another mountain community that's just amazing. Um, my mother and father, they, bo but they both worked at Colorado State University. Oh, okay. So my father was a, um, he's retired now. Um, he was a scientist. He okay. was oh. a professor in uh, biochemistry, yeah. food science, human nutrition. So, um, my mother also is a scientist. She, uh, is also retired now, but yeah. she was a parasitologist and microbiologist. Okay. So oh, my mom was a microbiologist oh, too. Oh, yeah. let's yeah. see. That comes in handy if yeah. you're like you know, <laughs> running in the mountains and you don't want to get Giardia. My oh. mom will tell me how to not do that. Oh, really? That's amazing. <laughs> um, and so our dinner conversations were always really interesting. Um, but like all things science and I was always really curious. I mean, I don't think it's curiosity is really something that you can teach. It's just something that you have. And I've always been very curious and so growing up um it was a really nice balance i mean my father whatever he would take time off uh, during the summer because he didn't have to teach and yeah. um even though he's you know running his research lab we would go camping um that's how we traveled in the summertime we'd take okay. i have older sister um we would just pack up and go camping uh in our little camper like all around the united states i think yeah. i've been to almost every single state in the united states that's awesome um but just camping and exploring and so i grew up like just like outside and I was always in the dirt. Like whenever my father went to go fishing, I was the first one to be like, yeah. like he would like utter the words like, f like fish. And I'd be like in the garden digging yeah. worms. Yeah. Um, I just have this like curiosity for just like, I think it's just with science, like observation, looking around and, um, just the natural world. Uh, I was never, I was a really big tomboy. I was never into like dolls or anything. Like yeah. <laughs> I remember like <laughs> buying like a, like an American girl doll. And I chose Josefina because she was like the native American, oh, nice. American girl doll. Yeah, yeah. So I could take her outside and play in the dirt with oh, me. That's awesome. <laughs> it was very strange. Yeah. Um, but like my, I know like, um, I always had this, I love bugs. Like people who follow me on Instagram, they're probably just like, why is she posting a photo of bugs? Because bugs are the coolest thing ever and they're everywhere. And it's a really cool way to just like explore nature and, I'm always yeah. looking around. Like I think most people don't notice, like maybe when they're running on the trails, but I always notice. And, um, I always notice them and I'm like, Oh my God, I, <laughs> I don't do well with bugs. I, I a lot bugs. of respect. <laughs> like I look at them and I'm like, Oh, see, no. I'm not even scared of that. Like I love spiders even and like all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, if, if, yeah. yeah, like camping. I'm your girl. I get the spider out of the tent. Like I'll hold it. What hand. about moths? I saw there's a like there's oh, yeah. like a moths are great. Bun bunch of moths in my house the other day. There was some kind of well. infestation and um, <laughs> you just don't want them eating your clothes. So maybe for, not that, well, they were can, like, like in the outside. in this uh, <laughs> sliding door in the patio and 
it was not cool so <laughs> we had to call the landlord but um it was like uh, two million moths coming out of this you know inside of this this door and th- th- yeah th- it's like miller moss like they i think actually it it's was. funny like maybe that was my first word <laughs> like <laughs> i like stood on this table like of this restaurant there's like miller moss so they, they make this like swarm every like migration every yeah. year oh, and really? i like, stood up on the table and like pointed it was like miller <laughs> My mom maybe told that to me. I don't know if it's true. But so science, like science and curiosity, like that's, I think, um, what brought me to where I am today. Yeah. Um, and it just is what continues to drive me on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, I mean, so that's kind of, I mean, a part that I think not many people talk about is, yes, I run and I'm, you know, I'm considered a professional runner, but I also have another job. Yeah. Um, I love, like, I've been a scientist my whole life, basically, you know, from when I could, you know, was out of the womb, I was like, you know, making observations and, you know, d- like, like basically studying my environment. Um, mm-hmm. But I also teach at a small college. I teach chemistry, physiology, um, biology, basically anything science. And is it organic chemistry? Um, so, yeah. So basically oh we, I can. I'm like, not so a big fan of organic. Uh, I was, I was, I love inorganic. Inorganic is great. I mean, all the chemistries organic. are great. So organic is hard. Organic is my favorite. Actually, oh, yeah. that was my, like, that was my emphasis in yeah. uh, undergraduate. So, um, and like what I used in my master's, I have a master's in neuroscience. Okay. Um, uh, so, but I mean, I teach all things chemistry. So this next semester I'm teaching basically chem two. So, um, it's, I just, I love it. it, it yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just something that I can, I feel like I have a good grasp on kind of how to make science accessible for a lot of people because, uh, it's everywhere you look, you just have to be like willing to kind of pick up on it or curious enough to look. Yeah. So it's not just, you know, what's in the lab and like, you know, changing colors in a beaker and like things right. exploding. <laughs> that was, that's what I was going to, I was wondering you, so you teach what made you want to, you know, teach instead of let's say go and work for a company yeah so that was actually a big decision um i was actually telling a friend of mine (laughs) like this week it's like i'm not really that irresponsible i'm very well thought out like the most irresponsible thing that i did was in my 20s was to get my master's and then decide to like pursue running more like (laughs) of a full tilt so i don't think that that's so irresponsible but um i i'm a very passionate person and if i don't have something that i'm passionate about to show up to every day then I don't really like the motivation is lacking. Like if I decide to do Couldn't something, agree more. yeah. If, if like my decision and motivation to do things is, is based off of passion yeah. and I don't see the point. Life is far too short. Um, to, s- yep. yeah, it's like, it's far too short to make a decision based on what I should be doing or what others think I should be doing. So, yeah. and it, it was really that simple for me. If like yeah. I had this gut feeling that it wasn't like where my passion lied yeah. doing a, being working for a big company or, um, being into, um, um, like scientific research. Um, it was an intellectual interest, but yeah. more where my passion lied yeah. was like seeing that aha moment in a student where oh, cool. like they would, you know, I tell them about the properties of water, like the properties of like d- different, you know, chemicals or solids or like yeah. the things that they, you know, like table salt or potassium and, yeah. you know, then they'd be like, wait, it works this way. Like, yeah. and <laughs> they would, then I could just see their yeah. world change. And yeah. then they look at the, like, you know, they look at me with like this bright, like new, yeah. like discovery. Yeah. <laughs> Chemistry school. I, I, so I'm an industry engineer. Um, nice. and so I really enjoyed like chemistry. And, um, one of the things I enjoy the most was like learning like all the different elements and using <laughs> them in like uh making all kinds of formulas and yeah I don't know, like uh, all kinds of exercises um mm-hmm. but uh when i took organic chemistry i think i failed that class they <laughs> were like industrial engineering was hard like i failed a bunch of classes <laughs> like uh um physical chemistry oh that was my favorite too i um, love physical chemistry <laughs> it was mechanics um yeah. it was very challenging uh statistics like statistics well we have one and two in peru so i'm from peru by the way yeah <laughs> well we can talk in spanish uh, if oh you'd yeah like, oh my so. i like it yeah in espanol por favor <laughs> next i like it um so yeah i i i i couldn't agree more with a lot of things that you, you say about life's too short uh find your passion and um, science is cool. Yeah, science <laughs> is cool. It was funny because when I was in finishing high school uh, and thinking about what to do with my life, I thought that I wanted to go to med school, mm. but not for the right reasons. The The reasons were, okay, uh, all my relatives are doctors, so mm-hmm. okay, maybe I should do that too. Doctors make a lot of money. So mm-hmm. that was what was really driving me, yeah. not, not the right reasons again. And three, 
I thought that I was not good with numbers. Mm. So I thought if I go to med school, I'm not going to have to deal with this anymore. <laughs> and then one day I realized it's not for me for several reasons. It was way too long. I wasn't really passionate about mm -hmm. the, you know, that path. And a friend of mine, my best friend from high school, he uh, had just got gotten into college and he was going to study industrial engineering. He told me about what he was going to do. The fact that you can learn so many different things, you know, uh, finance, accounting, uh, working in a plant. And that's how I found um, my path, which was marketing and mm -hmm. basically ended up working for companies. And, and that was kind of my, my, my path before I started my own thing, mm -hmm. like, because again, this thing about passion, you're so right. Mm -hmm. So and go ahead. And I think it's just, uh, it's something that I learned um, to kind of follow. Like I said, I have, I do have a strong gut feeling about things. Like if I have this, this feeling um, uh, that that it's right or wrong, like it's a very, it's a very strong, it's a very strong kind of guide for me. And I think a lot of people have that, but they maybe aren't able to recognize it or they're out of practice recognizing it. Um, and I think just out of fear or certain pressures, exactly. uh, it's you know, the people learn to not to not to not pursue that. And I think I'm lucky I've had a lot of, you know, besides this, you know, this, this recent trial, um, I've kind of learned that usually my gut, my gut actually always, my gut steers me. Right. So, right, right. um, like trusting in that and kind of, you know, taking a step back. Cause yeah. I mean, it, it would be scary to, to pursue something that maybe it doesn't have kind of a set end goal, especially for me who I like, I like to plan and yeah. have a plan, but, um, it's been completely worth it um to kind of take that chance and follow something that just strictly on passion which is for a scientist it's something that you can't really measure which yeah. seems kind of contradiction to contradictory yeah. but um yeah exactly yeah <laughs> but i'm i have a healthy balance i think i've learned i mean i as a chemist i went to study my master's in neuroscience and neuroscience is like you know it hasn't even been considered a, a, a hard science it, many people don't oh, even view right. it that I way yep. until like the 60s 1960s which is like you know it's not that long ago mm -hmm. yeah. and um um, I know like what is interesting about running for me as well as neuroscience is that there's definitely an, a, an, a measurable quantity to it, but there's not. Yeah. And right. like for, for trail running, like you can train, you can do all the things that make you your strongest self. You can measure your VO2 max. You can yeah. like optimize nutrition, all of these things. But there's this certain quality that's this intangible mental aspect that, yeah. you know, it, it, it's where the magic happens. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's somewhat inexplainable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like that, but that's what I love about it. So nice. <laughs> and so in college, um, what do you study? Uh, in co in undergraduate, I actually Spanish and oh um, cool and uh, yeah, excellent. Thing. Yeah, and then I studied abroad in Spain actually. Um, and so and then uh, chemistry, organic yeah. chemistry. Um, and yeah, I had like so. But that's actually what I, I love to obviously trail run and combine um, traveling too. So that's like yeah. kind of we'll get into the sky running thing too. But um, I think that study abroad experienced me. I, I lived in Sevilla, Spain. Yeah, uh, it's where I like kind of learned more Spanish and yeah. um, I became fluent there because yeah. I just immersed myself totally in the in the culture. And that's kind of I've always had a, tr had a passion for for traveling yeah. and to be able to combine. Yeah. Like it's one of my favorite things to do even before I started running yeah. was to travel to new places. Yeah. And um, now that I get to kind of like race there and like yeah. look at the nice yeah integrate into the culture and the running culture it's it's awesome so before running i, I know that in college you, you used to play tennis and yeah. you were pretty competitive at that so how did yeah. you i'm mean, just curious how did you get into that yeah so i mean we started kind of talking about fort collins and how i kind of grew up outside so mm -hmm. i grew up playing pretty much any and every sport because i just mm -hmm. loved to to move and to be outside mm -hmm. um and i got onto tennis because i liked the strategy like it wasn't yeah. just physical it was yeah. a lot of mental and so yeah. you could like <laughs> intimidate the heck out of the other girls so yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I think I, um, I only started playing tennis in ninth grade and okay. I just worked super hard. A lot of tennis players, they start really young, like, yep. um, when exactly. they're three or four, yep. this is a very totally. technical sport, mm -hmm. but I relied a lot on my athleticism. And so I actually earned this college scholarship to play. Nice. Um, and yeah. so, but I just loved it so much because it was very physical, very demanding. I mean, I was, I think this is probably the first inkling that I had endurance in mm -hmm. me because, yep. uh, I always like could just grind it out. Like I had this incredible record in college that every time it went to a third set, 
I won every single match that it uh, went to a third set because like I would just like, yeah, I would just like grind them down and like run down every single ball and just like not give up. Do you remember which one was which one was your longest game ever uh, or match? In yeah, game? I think it was like four hours or something like oh, this. Yeah, but it lot. was it was a long time and it was yeah, it was oh my gosh, it was, it was so hot. Um, but <laughs> uh, I do remember that and it actually happened to be like a national championship like yeah. to qualify us to go to the national championship. Oh, so nice. I was like yeah, I was pretty excited about that. Any any particular tennis players that you used to uh like professional i used to play tennis too so yeah. i used to love i mean i love andre Roger. agassi oh, oh okay he was my first love andre agassi yeah. not only because he played in like cut off jean shorts but with he a mullet off. and he had like a toupee he just but in, no but changed of, like, the industry yeah, yeah but instead of like wearing a toupee that's like a regular one he chose to have the toupee and a mullet so like that's pretty badass well, was he a toupee really yeah yeah because oh he's bald now yeah oh yeah but andre is like amazing and plus like his tenacity and like how he plays and he's yeah. like one of the best returners like i just i loved him uh, yeah i think my first tennis crush was like patrick rafter but um patrick he oh, like well, he I was like an aussie and i think he wore like white on his nose anyways like oh, for sunscreen yeah. like zinc <laughs> anyways um, um <laughs> what about um i love Ralph, uh, Ro roger federer obviously and rafa yeah. nadal yeah i so i'm more old school because i it was agassi and jim courier Oh cool. yeah, I thought he was just a machine. And then yeah. talking about machines, Steffi Graf. <gasps> yeah, she's just amazing. She was like, he would never. She was like a Terminator. <laughs> yes, and then Kleiser, she was my favorite, and obviously Serena. Like she's like yeah, not only course. like when I when I grew up, she was like you know dominating but yeah. now she still is dominating so she's one of the best players of all time it's yeah. been cool to like grow up and see her get on the tour yeah. and then like continue to dominate yeah um yeah i love 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 her yeah. um justine ennin oh yeah of yeah, course i love her because it's like a different style but yeah anyways <laughs> yeah i used to play too not like you but i used to play a country club i would take lessons and i think my um my the highlight of my tennis career would be that one day i sparred um <laughs> like w the number one or two proven professional tennis player it was fun heck yeah but uh i don't know like i i got bored i like you i used to do all kinds of sports mm. and try different things tennis taekwondo um swim which i still do yeah I, I, I think it's important to learn to swim anyway but um <laughs> and then i started running but um okay yeah. let's talk about running so, so how did i get into it yeah yeah. yeah i mean um i've I, I always say that i got into running by accident um i after graduating from undergraduate and um then i came back to colorado so mm -hmm. i went to school in iowa i came back to colorado to do um graduate school at cu in denver and um i mean i was still playing tennis pretty competitively ironically actually i was um commuting to boulder to play in tennis tournaments because the competition level was higher here like mm. probably players that had you know stopped playing from cu okay. and so i was i was playing in like open leagues there um still pr trying to be competitive but it just became too much like with the travel time and like the yeah. traffic and i just i just did not I didn't enjoy it as much and yep. I felt very, I, I felt burned out. Um, and so I started running. Um, I mean, actually I, sh I probably should have mentioned this. My father actually, he's, he's British. Uh, he ran for the British national team when he was like, you know, 1920. Mm -hmm. Um, and so he's 75 now. So wow. Like 55 years ago, he ran, um, like a 2:30 marathon oh, 228. Nice. So that's actually pretty fast. If you kind of like yeah, of look at the time and stuff like that. So he, like, so running has been in my jeans, but I just hadn't really done it. And my sister was actually the runner. Kay. Um, and she's a pretty fast runner at that, like in high school. But I wasn't really interested in that. I was like, what's the point of running? There's no like ball <laughs> involved. Like, come on, that's yeah. boring. Um, <laughs> and so I started running just as a way to, for like efficiency and to um, relieve stress. And mm -hmm. I started running with this group of ladies. Uh, they were like mid fifties. Oh, um, I read that and I forgot about it. Yeah, yeah. Please keep going. They're, this is fun. Yeah, yeah. They're, um, I forget the name of the club, but like, um, S they're just they're uh, amazing ladies yeah. like they were uh olympic trial marathoners like yeah. back in the 80s ran for a reebok yeah. um the Janie day uh she actually had the record on pikes peak ascent mount washington ascent oh, wow. in the 80s yeah. so she was she's a very solid athlete she's had a huge running career um and now like she's you know she's 57 now and she um you know she's just the example of like what it is to be an athlete your whole life and just to keep pushing you should mm -hmm. have her on this podcast um awesome. but she's uh like she's now a triathlete okay um i saw a post of her on your instagram yeah, page she's so was she your coach so she 
was actually, she was the first person that kind of got me into trails. So I was running with her and okay. that running group, like at 20, like I was 25. Yep. I was getting up at five in the morning to go run with these ladies like three, four times a week. And yeah. it was like the highlight of my day. Yeah. I've always said <laughs> that I'm like an old soul because yeah. I don't really fit in with like the, the 20 something year old people like yeah. going out and partying and like doing all this stuff. Yeah. Like I love oh, to yeah. get up early and go to bed, <laughs> like go to bed early yeah. and like yeah. do things like this. So it uh-huh. was just like, and I just love these ladies. They're just, they had such interesting stories they're so great Janie's always just she's just perpetually positive and um so she was the one that kind of recognized my tenacity and I think my drive and like Mm -hmm. whenever we do hill repeat she's like yeah I think you'd be good at this and so she she kind of took me under her wing and um like it was like a baby bird and like released me to the trails and was like go (laughs) and um her and Lisa Mills Lisa Mills is also like a great athlete and she still um she still runs on trails and does Mm -hmm. ultras um but um, she was like more of a, you know, road runner ba- back in like her 20s. And so, um, yeah, that's how it kind of had started. And, and Janie took me under her wing um, to run my first marathon. Um, she kind of coached me through it. But through my marathon training, every Sunday she would have me run my recovery run on a trail. Okay. And huh. I met more people doing that. And I mean, f- when I started running, it's like four years ago. Um, I did not know that t- or wait, 2018. Ago. Yeah. So like this is like four and a half. Um, like distance running. Yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't run more than, you know, 15 miles. I think my first 2014, 2013. So five years ago, um, like that, I had never run longer than a 5k. Like I (laughs) didn't know, you know what that was about. Um, I certainly, like, I certainly didn't know anything about workouts or anything. So Janie really taught me and I didn't know anything about trail running. I had no idea trail running was a sport. No yeah. idea that ultra running was a sport. <laughs> like, so I met people that did hundred miles and I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I can't even run 20 miles on a trail without yeah. just feeling totally wrecked. That's crazy. And, um, so that was kind of my first introduction to trail running. And then I ran my first marathon and I was like, well, that was no fun. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I did some other dabbling on some like road just to like make uh, like a d- achieve this goal that I wanted. And then I was like, well, I don't want to do this again. I want to do trail running. <laughs> oh, wow. So, and your first marathon was this time that you ran in loops? Uh, well, so I did my first marathon. Um, it was ca- the first like official marathon was okay. California International Marathon. Okay. And I think I ran like a 312 or something okay. like this. Um, but I wanted to see if I could break three hours. And so this <laughs> okay. is where I did loops of Wash Park <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> in awesome. Denver. Self-supported. Oh, that's oh it was awful. Yeah. Like, I, but I was like really stubborn and like really yeah. like and it was like a 250 like 50 so like basically 251 but like yeah so <laughs> okay so you were like okay i'm gonna switch to trail running yeah. and um how did you got how do you get more into that because then you got into all things sky running which yeah for for our listeners uh people who are watching this um what is the difference between who are not very familiar difference between sky running and just trail running or ultra running? so there's a lot of different things i think people say trail running and they just lump everything in there okay. um and within trail running there's a ton of different distances and it's like a track meet like you don't lump like track and field like track and field like all the athletes into yeah. one like you don't lump like a 5k runner with a mile runner with a 200 meter runner with a 50 meter you know like right. it's not the True. same so there are a bunch of different distances like 50ks you know, 50 miles, a hundred kilometers, a mm-hmm. hundred miles. Of course. So that's like, you know, 30 miles, 50 miles, 60, 70 miles to a hundred miles. Uh, there's not more than a hundred yeah, miles I too. Um, but even within those different distances, there's different types of terrain. So trail running for me is when you're off of the pavement. Um, and usually for me, just cause I like Hills, it usually involves some sort of undulation in the terrain so up uh, up in elevation or down but there are co- trail runs that are completely flat you yeah. know so to me trail running means off the pavement but once you're off the pavement you can get pretty technical so yeah. sky running is kind of one of the more extreme trail runs where you have extreme elevation okay. gains so sky running is typically like it, it's in Europe they do from like the sea to the sky, like where you run uh, um, from like in Europe t- tertiary where it was yeah. launched from, from sea level to like the top of the tallest mountain. So um, sky running typically for a 50 kilometer race, it'll have, so 30 miles, yeah. it'll have about 11 to 15,000 feet of positive elevation <laughs> gain. So it's like you're running up. Oh my God. It's like yeah. you're running up a 14er from sea level. Wow. So over the course of the 50 miles, so you have to run up that far 
far and then of course you have to descend yeah. it so uh, obviously i just described two extremes but no, trail running is where off the pavement so it can be flat as a pancake but yeah. on trail like crushed right. gravel yeah. uh, something like rocky raccoon i would say something yeah. like that okay um um, or I mean, there are, yeah, there, but there's a, a slew of them or to like sky running, which is like super technical. Like I think hard rock 100 would kind of right. be in this where yep. you're in the San Juans and like, then of course in trail running, like in, in sky running, you can have all this extreme elevation gain, um, starting from sea level going up to like 8,000 feet or like yeah. a race like hard rock where you're basically above 12,000 feet for a lot of the race. Yeah. So there's a lot of variation, but I kind of trend tend to categorize sky running in more the mountain running category. Okay. So I think it's, it's within ultra running. There's like trail running and mountain running. Yep. Um, and the mountain running usually involves the more technical terrain, like more rocks, like, and there's more, it's more fun. Yeah, for me it's <laughs> way more fun. There's more undulation in the, in yeah. the trails and, yeah. um, more like, more, like I said, more technical aspects, but definitely more elevation gain and, um, descent and stuff like that. So, so you were always, um, you, since the beginning, you knew that that kind of running was your thing. I just had a tenacity. I just, I, I kind of liked the uncomfortableness of climbing. Like I think I found some <laughs> sort of like pleasure in um not it wasn't like painful but i just i, I loved it and yeah. also i just like to get on top of things and like to get to the view yeah. and, and it, to like look and course. be like oh can i get up there yeah right and it was part of that curiosity thing like coming back to science it's yeah. like i was curious if i could actually run that far yeah. or if i could actually get there right. wherever there was and and there's always a challenge in that like even if i do the same trail every day like every run is going to feel different and i'm kind of curious about how why that is or you know like what yeah. how my body's gonna feel how it's gonna react is it gonna yeah. be easier or not yeah. um and then it, it was just cool to like see these views and you know then look back yeah. when i'm at my car in my house like huh i just went up there <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious that's yeah. all I, I can agree more so <laughs> can you talk more about the, the you know the the period of like for instance you started running you mm -hmm. started running on trails and then basically a year later <laughs> you're winning uh big races i'm curious to hear more your that journey you know yeah. from oh i decided to start running <laughs> to winning big races how that yeah. so i think um i think i was lucky in the fact that i maybe had a knack or a talent for it but i don't like to just fall back on that um i i think really what got me there was my passion i loved it i and i practiced it a lot mm -hmm. and it was a lot of hard work went into it a lot of learning um and i just wanted to be on the trail so that's that's where my priorities were um yeah. so that's where i went and that's where it just felt mo like most alive i remember the first time that i started trail running and like really running and it was just a completely different world than road running for me. Yeah. Um, I just, I felt so free. I felt so, um, connected to myself, uh, that I could just, you know, explore. And I felt like a kid in many ways, but it's just, um, so I think that in every single run that I've had, <laughs> I mean, even in the hard days, but that's kind of what propelled me, I think to, yeah. Um, to start dreaming and dream big. And I really, really had no, I no goals to be a professional runner. When I yep. started running, I actually was very hesitant to sign up for my first competition because I didn't want to get burnt out like tennis. Mm. Oh. And I know that about myself. I can be, I'm a, you know, I'm a type A person. I like to plan and train and like yeah. all this stuff, but I didn't want that to bring the fun out of it. Yeah. So I really wanted to preserve that. And so if I thought that it was going to be fun to do a certain race, um, then I would do it. And how I, it was able to combine that in a, in a good way, in a healthy way for me was to combine it with cool places that I wanted to visit. Yeah. Nice. So okay. I, so, um, I think that year I did, um, it uh, was it 2014, 2015. I forget which year it was. Um, 2014, I believe this is the first year that I raced and, and won the U S sky running series. Um, I actually raced my first 50 mile race, which was the Bighorn 50, um, Where you, Utah? No. Yeah, that's in, it's in Wyoming. Oh, okay. Um, so they have the big one 100 there too. Um, it was gorgeous. I mean, I've never been to those mountains. It was so cool. I mean, yeah. I grew up, you know, going to Wyoming, but never running. And so, uh, and I got the course record and I won there and I was like, <laughs> Oh boy. And then awesome. I was like, okay, well this was fun, but this wasn't the point. Like I thought I was just going to like, I thought literally like what happened after 30 miles, yeah. my legs were going to explode. Yeah, like yeah. I thought that that was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't. It was fine. Yeah. I remember my mom came and like at the finish line, she was like yelling at me and taking pictures. And the only thing that she could say was you're doing it. You're doing oh, it. And awesome. I'm like, yeah <laughs> quit talking to me i'm gonna cry because uh, i hurt so bad of course um 
But then after that, it's like where I met some people who were like, hey, Hillary, you should come out and try this. Like they encouraged me to start trying some skyrunning races okay. yeah. because they knew like Hilly Goat, I had like, they knew I just loved to <laughs> run uphill. Um, and so that was in June. And then I did the first kind of skyrunning series, which was uh, Speed Goat. Okay. And then I did pretty well there and I loved it. Um, and then, um, and then I did... Run the, rut. run the rut and then i did the um a, what is it called it's in arizona the flagstaff sky race oh, okay and so those three i did well enough and i and i won the final race that that w- i was able to um to win the u.s sky running series and then from there um literally i mean i was hooked and that's that's like what th- so that first race at speed goat I had that was my first time on a real mountain course like that, like climbing that much in a single race. Hmm. And I had so much fun. Yeah. It was. And so I just so I had no plan to do any of those races that season, yeah. but I just kind of happened and I just yeah. kind of let it happen organically. And then I made my way out to run the rut. And I, that was amazing. Yeah. And then uh, it's one of my favorite races. Yeah. And then um, and then going to the Flagstaff Sky Race. And it was just like all of what I loved. And then. From there, I'd always had this dream of racing in Europe and yeah. winning the U.S. Skyrunning Series. The prize was I got to choose a World Skyrunning Series race that oh. I wanted to do. Oh, cool. And so I chose the Mont Blanc 80K okay. that I competed in in 2015. And that was kind of my splash onto the European scene. Okay. And I got third there. Like, it was like the, f- I mean, it was a like, like Americans hadn't really, I mean, there have been Americans yeah, in that's racing, true. but like, um, I think people were surprised they didn't expect me to do well because typically Americans going over to race in Europe, they don't do so well because we're not used to the steepness of the trails and it really is a different world. Um, But like, but obviously now like we're doing it. So it's like, (laughs) it's like we're doing pretty well now. Um, But yeah, that was my first kind of entry into that world. And then from there, I just kind of didn't look back because again, it combined what I really loved running and exploration in new places. Yeah, right. When did you start running for the North Face? That year, 2015. So it's basically after you you won the Sky Race mm-hmm. series that Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um so, okay, you're running Europe, you're doing all these amazing races <laughs> and then um when I'm I'm thinking about something else. Um <laughs> 2000 well no i was just gonna say 2017 is when you go to uh, uh to norway uh, yeah to to run um what is it wha- the wha- tromso sky race the, the tromso mm-hmm. sky race so that was basically supposed to be the culmination you were kind of wrapping up your season is that right yeah so typically when i d- when i so when i kind of got into the sky running in europe i was like huh like i want to do this as a season so let's see how i could do got this it. so because i teach at a small college i have oh. the summers off and so basically what i did is i devoted my 2016 season and my 2017 season to just basically live in europe so i'd pack up my bags in may and live in europe nice. do a bunch of races like go f- to the different you know the circuit series of you know where i wanted which they were um mostly in europe and then i'd come back do a few races in the circuit in the US, um, but I'd be gone from May until August. Okay. Um, and so that's how I did my season in 2016, and that's how I did my season in 2017. So, um, Trumso, so basically, um, so I was competing for the World Skyrunning Series, and I had gotten, so now it's of the US, now I had goals on the, the yeah. World Skyrunning Series. So I got had got third um, in 2016, okay. and then I was actually leading the US, the World Series Skyrunning, uh, the World Skyrunning Series. Um, in 2017 when I was in Tromso, Norway. Mm -hmm. Um, And then that's where basically I catapulted off of a mountain. That's (laughs) Um, incredible, mate. And so, I mean, I say that jokingly, um, just so I don't cry, but, um, <laughs> it's yeah. so basically I was running this race. It was another sky race, yeah. um, in Norway, a place I'd never been before. It yeah. was spectacular. I was on a technical portion of this Ridge, which it involved some, you know, kind of scrambling, but I like that because I yeah. practice on that terrain all the time. Um, and it was just unfortunate. There was some rock fall underneath yeah. kind of movement. Um, you know, if people are running on a Ridge line the same way. Uh, maybe someone else's yeah, it just happened. foot, yeah. you know, like it yeah. caused some shift. And then when I went on it, it yeah. just, you know, so basically it just was like a rug got pulled out from underneath me right. and I fell, um, yeah. but not like 20 feet. I fell 150. Yeah. So, um, the length of a 50 meter rope basically. So, um, had a huge like mountain rescue, yeah. um, you know, basically went from 
winning on top of the world to, you know, like really fit uh, to not being able to walk. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a crazy, crazy recovery period. I mean, there's several articles, like if listeners want to know more, they can like read. Yeah. Um, there's a few in like the trail running uh, yeah. and a recent article in the outside online magazine. So um, they can read there. Yeah. But um, that was the beginning of a intense recovery period and just um you know really i just had to kind of reevaluate uh yeah. my life and what where i wanted it to go and what i wanted to do um and really kind of buckle down and it, just recover and see if i could you know get back to doing something that i loved again yeah i mean following you on instagram when uh you know i saw you uh, your accident and i was following all your recovery process um it was not easy mm. and i don't i don't really know you you know mm. like we're not friends you know <laughs> yet <laughs> now we are but now we are yeah <laughs> but what i would see on your posts were like um it, it's hard to, like a lot of things like for instance um a lot of self-doubt you know mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. fear mm -hmm. um excitement of course <laughs> uh, celebrating the little victories you mm -hmm. know i made it up to mount St. Edith again you know yeah. how great is that um but you know it was it was it was really i mean i was always like thinking man you know this is this is great like super 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 inspiring and i said this before we started the conversation when i saw your post of you winning uh this race in italy uh cortina 48k mm -hmm race i was like she's already winning races i mean i knew that you were you were gonna come back but <laughs> it just feels like you're the accident made you a much stronger person mentally <laughs> and physically that's how i perceive it and actually so that's that's um it's hard to i mean <laughs> it's 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 hard to look back on um I, I feel like i'm a very i feel like i'm very much within my recovery still so i feel like it's hard to have perspective when i'm still it's like if you're running a race it's hard to write a post-race report when you're still running mm -hmm. the race right so i feel like there's still a lot of things that are kind of happening um but i mean i've heard that before like that i'm stronger you know now and i, I i've read this 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 book it's called anti-fragile so it's like mm. yeah like resilience is like bouncing back but i feel like i've become something new um from this accident mm -hmm. so and i think it's more more even it has resilience in there but it's it's something new entirely so it has this kind of more um yeah i do i do feel stronger in a lot of ways um i do have like a different perspective um but i don't know if it's like i say stronger i say that and i don't even like that word it's something new it's something different like mm -hmm. i wrote kind of a few blog posts about this of who i am without running and also like this idea of the comeback um which I, I will use the word comeback because I am coming back, but also who I am now and who, where yeah. I'm coming back to is not the same. Yeah. Um, so it, it's hard obviously because in a sport like running, we're constantly comparing times and efforts, but even in a certain trail run or training run, like yeah. how, if I do it the same day, uh, the one day versus the next, like I feel completely different. It's yeah. not the same ever, even though yeah. like, you know, and, but we measure it with a, with a stopwatch. Right. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I definitely feel like I, I feel like, Yes, maybe that is accurate from an outside perspective of saying I'm, I'm stronger, but I'm, I'm, I've reached a new point. I, I'm no longer the same Hillary as I was yeah. um, before. And that's exciting. It's yeah. scary because, yes, throughout the whole entire recovery, I was going through an immense amount of self-doubt. I still am. Um, I still don't feel like I'm back, quote unquote. Yep. I mean, I don't really like I don't know what that is. I don't feel like I'm there wherever there is. Um I certainly don't feel the same and maybe I won't ever feel the same as I, as, as I, as I, you know, had or, you know, did when I would, when I would run. Um, but that's okay. It's kind of being, it's, it's reaching a new, I use the word equilibrium because I'm a scientist, but, <laughs> um, it's just reaching this new balance, um, and this new kind of, um, I don't know, just this push and pull where I can, where I can, um, let in those self, self doubts and acknowledge them, but not let them kind of control me. And yeah. I think that, um, that's like, it's, it's an exciting area where I'm discovering kind of new attributes of strength that yeah. I never thought I possessed. Yeah. And I think without this accident, maybe I wouldn't have been able to uncover or, um, you know, uh, or ha given, I view it as an opportunity. 
Uh, I definitely think it's an opportunity that I've that I've had and I've, I've chosen actively every day to not give up yeah. and um, to use it as an opportunity to learn from right. and create something new with yeah. it. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> like y- it's like growing as a, you know, as a person, you, you find you, you attribute, like you were saying, new attributes, uh, new things that make you, um, you know, um, keep evolving as a yeah. person, of course. And I think it's interesting too because <coughs> it's changed how I viewed uh, w- like the word strength or um, or uh, you know mentality of training or um, you know or you know t- a certain trail runner if I feel bad or something like this like to push through but also to have that compassion um, and I think it's something that it doesn't even just have to apply to to injury it uh, I think it applies to anyone who's going through yep. any sort of life struggle like changing job moving yep. um, relationships any of that stuff I yep. think it's just um, I've been I've been amazed by the resilience of the human body but also I mean the human spirit I think that's even more impressive yeah uh and to be able to experience that firsthand and kind of not even knowing uh, not even being able to realize it till kind of after it's happened like yeah. even after a month I was like oh well yeah physically I can do this trail now and it feels easier but then like mentally I feel like I'm in a different spot and it's well, really cool I was reading an article or was it a video I think it was an article where you talk about um that maybe you when you were not able to run you would just your workouts or your goals for the day would be okay i'm just gonna try to go to this coffee shop today <laughs> th- you know yeah. and try to make to see if i can make it you know there and mm-hmm. um even the simple things were really hard um yeah. and now you just recently uh raced in europe and we're just talking about this race that you not only race but you won mm-hmm. so so a lot of things in in, in my mind right now uh, w- what made you think about doing the race and and talk a little bit more about that experience and winning it of course yeah so um i had no goals to race this season i didn't <laughs> think that i would be able to um so it was i i had planned to like i said i love to travel and mm-hmm. so i i knew that i wanted to travel this this season and use the opportunity that i had to travel um but i didn't um i literally signed up for the race the race was on saturday i signed up on a wednesday like i had no idea that yeah. i was gonna do the race <laughs> um i had actually planned like as my first race first race back or effort back was gonna be a vertical kilometer at the broken arrow sky race okay that was the week before and then i decided by the like encouragement of my coach who uh, adam st pierre mm-hmm. um he coaches for karma uh, cts okay yeah yep. um yeah so like i did the broken arrow sky race like the next day like the 52k race and i cried so much like that was my i think my first race back and it was scary like it was it took an immense amount of courage to even get on that start line because like i want to compete that's in me like i I want to be my best i love to compete because there's people around me that are fit and like they're going to push me to be my best and like i want to beat them or you know what i mean like they're challenging me and i want to rise to the occasion yeah but i didn't feel physically ready and i realized that with the encouragement of some of my friends that i would never be ready and i didn't know what that meant like would i ever be there and what Mm -hmm. was i waiting for so i just needed to rip off the band-aid and so i did that race um i like it was so emotional, like, uh, yeah. just because the last time I raced 50 kilometers, I nearly died yeah. and it was real. Like I got to this like ridge line and I saw the photographer that was actually there in oh. the race in Norway and no I just started way. falling again. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was pretty, it was, it was pretty emotional. Um, but I got to the finish line and actually my body felt great. And yeah. So I had already had plans to travel to uh, Cortina to basically do a speaker series there um, just because Europe is where my heart is. Like it's, yeah. I, I, it's where kind of my career as a trail runner kind yeah. of blossomed and I love to go back there and the, the community is amazing. And so I w- had planned to, there's a recent film that came out uh, this week in the States. Um, the Mentors. The Mentors yeah, series. That was great. Yeah, yeah, I so loved it. Yeah. That's kind of what was the debut of launching that in Europe. It was over there uh, for this Cortina trail mm-hmm. race and uh, for Lavaredo. Um, and then I just decided, uh, my coach was like, Hill, like you should try it. Like, just go for it. Like, you know, you're recovering well, like you didn't really do like, I mean, I, obviously I, I ran that 50 K race, but I didn't, I didn't feel like, you know, I wasn't racing. I was just trying to see if I could mm-hmm. like finish it. And then I, you know, I signed up, I was, you know, kind of nervous, but of course I was nervous because I just, you know, didn't yeah. know. And I was listed in the elite field and I'm just like, oh man, I don't know if I'm elite like yeah. anymore. Like that's a huge fear. Yeah. And, um, so and I just ran my heart out like I told myself that I would run with heart and that I would run 
to just to just to be happy in like the Dolomites are one of my favorite regions in Italy and I just ran and I th- didn't know I was actually winning I don't think anyone knew I was winning because I was a late register so I'd, like my yeah. number was high <laughs> and like I didn't even have my name associated with my bib <laughs> and awesome. yeah I literally just ran with my heart and I just tried to enjoy every single step my strategy was just to run as much of the uphill as I could and I think it Took every step. <laughs> talk about that uh, more. You, you you were saying running with your heart. Um, one of the things that I'm always curious about people who, you know, like you, successful athletes, is this idea of digging deep. Like, mm-hmm. um, did you pace yourself? Were you running as f- I don't know as fast as you could? Like, uh, well, that's hard in an ultra. I still don't feel like I don't know how to like race an ultra. But I think um, the best part for for me is like to. I was nervous about the downhill because like my ankles and my feet still don't feel the same. Like I tore a pretty big ligament in my foot and it's still sore. What about your wrists? I know that you had both of your wrists broken. Yeah, I had both my wrists broken. I mean, thankfully you don't use those in trail running unless you fall again, (laughs) which (laughs) I have actually. Um, But uh, no, there's still like limited mobility in Mm -hmm. them. Um, They're still rehabbing, but um, like, yeah, I mean, they're, they're they're good. I mean, I feel like an old lady now because I can definitely tell when a storm's coming because my my wrists like ache (laughs) 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 and so does my, my foot. But, um, yeah, I mean, so that, that's good. But I mean, I was nervous about the downhill running from an ankle and foot foot perspective. And so, and I love the, I love uphill running. And so I just told myself like running with heart to me is just like running with my heart on my sleeve. I told some people, like, if I see them on the course, I might cry. (laughs) Yeah. And that's funny. Like, I don't like, usually I'm happy, but I'm like, I'm obviously really happy. But like, if I, it's an emotional experience, like, and if I see someone, I I cry when I'm overwhelmed and sometimes like seeing them and still like trying hard, like (laughs) it'll like make me cry. Um, I don't think I cried to the finish though. Uh, (laughs) but just running with my heart is just being super super honest and open and just like trying. So for an ultra, it's definitely pacing too. Right. Um, I wasn't running all out. Um, but for me, my strategy was to run as much of the uphill as I could because yeah. I can handle that. Um, I can push pretty hard on the ups and still like recover on the downs and still be able to push hard on the up again. Um, but for me, it was being focused on the downhill mm. to focus on pushing myself to a little bit more than I'm comfortable with on the downhill. Yeah. And there were some parts where, yeah, I was definitely like pretty scared. I took yeah. a little tumble, but it was like, it wasn't really anything. <laughs> um, but I cried a little bit when I took a tumble because if anything, it didn't hurt. Like, but it, it scared me. Yeah, of course. Um, and <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but yeah, so th- that's kind of, that was my strategy going into it. And like, I didn't even, I wasn't even paying attention to the place. Right. Um, and apparently I was leading the whole race. So and usually wow. my style of racing is like to, you know, start out like, you know, more strategy of like, yeah. you know, top three, like kind of run with the ladies. And then like, yeah. I like to run a stronger second half. Um, but this one was different. I think it was just magical. Like, yeah. um, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. And so now, um, what's next for the rest of the year? I read yeah. that you're doing tra- trans rock, trans Rockies. Yeah. With Ooh. Lucy Bartholomew. So oh, I saw nice. her at Squaw Valley and uh, like before her Western States run. And so we're gonna, she's this, she's an amazing for people who don't know her. She's this amazing Aussie who just ran her first hundred mile race. She's been doing running for a while. And Oh, she did um, uh, Western. She did Western. Yeah, she got yeah, third. Of course, yeah, yeah. She's awesome. And yeah. so I've actually met her for the first time when I did the Chamonix Mont Blanc 80 K in 2015. Okay. And so we've been friends ever since. And I think it's a really cool way. It's like right around the year anniversary of the accident. And yeah. so like, do a stage race where I'm actually strong enough to like run like I didn't think I'd get to a point where I could run like one day run the next and run the next like I thought I was you know. right yeah. yeah so it's like a huge kind of celebration and you know so we're coming up with maybe like a team logo she likes watermelons I really like bugs so I think one's gonna involve like an ant carrying a watermelon I, I think <laughs> I saw a little mock-up of that yeah. uh, on your Instagram oh, page or um, <laughs> that's all so Lucy likes watermelons Is mm-hmm. that I mean thing? I love watermelons oh, that's too good. That's good. but yeah, like yeah doesn't? so but like, yeah she had so we're maybe we might make shirts but I'm gonna do trans Rockies which I'm super excited about of course. Um, before that actually I'm pacing my coach at Hard Rock. So wow. yeah, I'm headed out there this uh this coming week. Um and I'm before that I'm get I'm actually gonna do soft rock. So 
Uh, what is soft rock? So yeah, soft rock is yeah. basically you just do the hard rock course, but in three days. Yep. Yep. So it's still gonna be pretty <laughs> hard. Um, I mean, I like, but that's actually like that's kind of one of my goals that I wanted to do with the at like, if I was strong enough to try to do soft rock. Are um, you planning to move into hundred mile distance eventually? That's a or? good question. Um, this is actually the first um time in my life that I've um thought about it um mm. because like i said i'm a passionate person i don't want to do anything unless i w i want to do it and mm -hmm. i'm excited to do it yeah. and i think especially for a race that long you need that excitement and that drive right so i kind of haven't had it i've been unsure but i think this is the first time where i'm like you know what yeah like i think i could so um still i don't have anything planned yet i think it's too soon as far as like my foot recovery is concerned but yeah um yeah, I think I'm definitely. I oh, have totally. Hard like rock, new, UTMB. Yeah, like uh. new mental strength, <laughs> stuff like that. So, That's awesome. found a new level. So, I think, yeah, it could be <laughs> useful in that. And I think it's it would be an aspect of ultra running that I really enjoy. For sure. So, yeah. What about, um, curious, on your science career mm -hmm. are you planning to keep pursuing that or yeah actually i'm i'm teaching i just had a meeting with my boss today yeah well, uh, so i'm teaching another chemistry class and uh, physiology class like two of my favorites this next semester so okay. i get to balance it with the time that i'm gone and coming back like he's super flexible and amazing nice. so yeah i mean it's it's hard i definitely want don't want to give that up i just i love science so much so <laughs> um but then i've actually get the opportunity to go to south america to run I've never oh been. nice uh, i gotta go to chile there's a endurance yeah. challenge series race okay. for the north face in okay. chile um close to santiago so yeah. i'm excited i'm gonna do that in october uh, i've been thinking about going to patagonia i'm never into that part of the yeah of the I'll world but too. it's like one of those bucket list uh places i would like to go uh, and probably do I've never done the Inca Trail which is kind of lame I've from being from Peru I know I've been to the ruins only once in my life I'm That's like okay. I'm, I suck at being from <laughs> Peru <laughs> but um, I want to I want to do that too the Inca Trail like part well the Inca Trail is huge it like it crosses like four countries so I mean I would I really want to do part of the Inca yeah, Trail as well yeah, so awesome. I'd have to do like kind of like more more trips but this would be my first kind of you know, jump into that part of the world. Nice. And yeah. Then I'm going to go to Nepal for a stage race, um, in, um, in November. Oh, nice. Yeah. Really? So it's called the Manas Manaslu, okay. uh, Richard Bull. It's the same race series that they put on for Mustang trail races okay. in April. So awesome. yeah. Good idea and you too. also went to Haiti. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I saw a video. Talk more yeah. about that. So that, oh man, that was actually in 2015. That was pretty intense. Yeah. It was like one of the most intense running experiences of my yeah. life. Not actually. So we ran actually across Haiti. Um, not east to west, but north to south. But still, it was like 220 miles, something like this. Mostly wow. on actually pavement or like packed dirt okay. roads. Um, but that was the furthest I've run like in an eight-day period. Um, but it was difficult, um, more so from an emotional point of view. Uh, I, I encourage people to check it out if they want to. It's called Further. Um, it's a film that North Face is on the North Face's YouTube page. Um, but it was really cool because it combined... Um, I, I wish it was more cultural integration, um, but it was um, but it, it was a really cool thing that North Face did. That we teamed up with this thing called Team Has Tassie. It okay. was a run across Haiti where we – this it's basically um, a fundraising. I would I don't like to categorize it in charity because it's not just giving money to the people of, of Haiti, like in this one neighborhood, Men Menlaos, um, um, is, uh, this neighborhood that was really severely affected by the hurricanes and okay. now like the cholera outbreak and just – horrible like no running water no electricity mm. people dying of you know cholera um wow. and so it was basically this organization that could um but like participating in this run you could only like give money to this organization which would then teach certain families to um to basically have these new skills like there was a uh, like teaching them to be a mechanic mm -hmm. or you know it just uh, having all these different skills and these new jobs they could then like be self-sufficient so cool. it was that but then also participating in the run you know we'd go across haiti and we were actually contributing to the economy in some small way yeah. and promoting tourism yeah uh, there's amazing awesome. like people think about the d like the dominican republic right there like sharing a border and they go there for vacations but actually haiti has some of the same like beautiful beaches yeah. and huh. resorts so right. um bringing it was awareness yeah. yeah, it was really cool, um, but also very hard because there's, it's, it's extremely, there's a lot of poverty and yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, I was really happy to be involved in something like that. Yeah. So. When was that? 
It was in 2015, February. 2015. Yeah. It's wow. really cool. I mean, they're still doing the run. It's definitely grown. Um, yeah. It's super challenging, like, physically, but also just m- emotionally, just to see kind of, like, what's happened there and how, and, but also super empowering because those people, yeah. like, they just have this passion for life and they just keep going and keep surviving. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much for being in the show. It was so much fun. Yeah, I know there's guys. a lot that we talked about. So I, no, this, not is, so this like is great. <laughs> I, <congruent. laughs> yeah, I appreciate you coming. Yeah. I also want to say thank you for just, I don't know, keep inspire all, inspiring all of us. I mean, Aww, you know, thank yeah, you. Just, just an amazing story. Uh, and thank yeah, you. I love to follow your adventures on Instagram. So Thanks. I invite everybody <laughs> to follow Hillary on Instagram. That is at hillygoat underscore Climbs, climbs. Is yep. that right? Yep. Hilly any, goat climbs. <laughs> any other uh, website or social media I mean, platform that you're active on? Or yeah, just Facebook. It's just Hillary Allen, and then um, same Twitter handle, Hillary, Hilly Goat Climbs. I also have a blog, but I'll usually like repost that. So yeah, awesome. Um, but yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it, Hillary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to the rest of the year. Yeah, me too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> Bye.